So now that we've set up the switcher, let's spend a little time covering some of the basics in video switching to get you started. Well, there's nothing more basic than the layout of the control panel. So let's take a look at the panel here and I'll cover what the different sections do. These sections right here are called the video cross points. Now we set up our cross points earlier in the menu system when we set XD Cam 1 and 2 and 3 and so forth on these buttons. The top row is called the A bus and the bottom row is called the B bus, although a lot of people refer to these as program and preview. Whatever is on the A or program bus and I change the buttons, changes the video source. Same thing happens on preview, it's just that it's going to happen on the preview bus as opposed to program. These two rows up here are going to feed things like my keyers and aux buses and things like that throughout the switcher. The top row is a delegate row, meaning that I push the button to say which part I'm going to feed. So for instance, if I want to change something on aux bus 2, I'm going to hit aux bus 2 and then select the source that's going to go into aux bus 2. Now I can go over here to aux bus 1 and change that. You can see that changing on my multi-display here. Or if I want to change what's feeding the keyer. I can go over here and put something else into the keyer. Now notice as I change these, the cross point changes. In the middle is the OLED labels. So these allow me to show every single source that's on this. Now this control panel has 24 buttons or cross points. Black and shift aren't really used as sources, so we really have 22. Now, the switcher has 32 inputs, so obviously you may have to go beyond what the buttons can do. That's what the shift button does. You hold it down and it lets me get to a second row. So you can see here, as I push the shift button, all my labels change to show me what's on the shifted side. If I want to select a shifted cross point, I hold shift down and push the button. Now you can see that both these lights are lit, indicating that I'm really on a shifted cross point. By default, it's going to go back to the unshifted labels unless I'm holding down shift. Now this portion to the right is called the transition area. This portion right here allows me to do transitions with my video sources. So this lets me set what type of transition, what kind of sources I'm going to use with it, and the fader arm to execute the transition if I want to. Underneath here is the direction for wipes and things like that. To the right are the keyers. So here I have key 1, key 2, key 3, and key 4. This also lets me set what type of transitions the keyers are going to use, and even has four little memories for storing key parameters. Now, ME1, which is here, is a duplicate of program preset. It has all the same features and looks identical, with the exception of the fader bars are interleaved so that they don't bump into each other and you don't have to worry about where your hand is going. On the upper right hand corner is the trackball. Now the trackball is kind of a positioner, but it really does triple duty. In its most basic form, it allows me to select ME1 or program and to change the position of a white pattern on the screen. It also, when I push this button, allows me to change and manipulate the resizers that are on two of the keyers on each ME. And when I go into the device control mode, it allows me to control up to four devices connected to the 3000. That would be things like VTRs, disc recorders, things like that. Even the frame memory channels as animation I can control from this trackball. And finally, this portion here is where we're going to spend a lot of time when we create effects. This is called the multifunction module. And as the name suggests, it has multiple functions. In some of its most basic things, it allows me to change the transition rate. So up here in this corner, this says I'm going to change keyframe effects, snapshots, uh, key adjustments, or transitions. And down here, I'm going to select what I want to do. So for instance, I'm going to change the transition rate of program preset Right now, it's set to 15 frames. If I wanted to change it to 20 frames, I would simply type in 20 and hit enter. And now you can see down here and up here that it tells me I'm going to do a 20 frame transition. So now let's talk a little bit about transitions and how we get from one source to another source. So the most basic kind of transition we have is a cut. The easiest cut to do is to simply push the buttons on the control panel. This would be a hot punch, and you might see this a lot when somebody's cutting cameras. There won't be any need to preset anything, I'm just cutting cameras. Now I can also preset something and cut it as a transition. So, as you can see here on program, I've got the motorcycle here, and on preview, I have this beautiful sunset shot. I can either take the sunset shot with my hands, or I can preset it and hit the cut button over here. 
Now, when I hit cut, notice that what was on program goes into preview, and what was on preview goes into program. So as I go back and forth, it's called a flip-flop, by the way. As I go back and forth, they'll change. So when I cut back to this, I can preset another source, cut to it, preset another source, cut to it, and so on and so on. And I can even interchange them. So I can preset two, and then immediately cut to one with my finger, cut to three, preset one, and cut back. But sometimes you need a little more subtlety in your transitions. So let's take a look at a mix. So mix, or a dissolve, as it's also known, is when I preset something, and instead of hitting cut, I either press the auto trans button or move the fader. I'm going to use the fader so I can demonstrate this a little easier. What this is doing is it's mixing one source into another. Think of like an audio mixer where you're going from one sound to another and you cross fade it where one fades out and one fades up. This is the same exact thing except with video. Now an automatic transition tells the computer inside the switcher to do a transition at exactly the transition rate that we just specified, which was 20 frames. So I can preset two, dissolve, preset three, dissolve, preset four, dissolve. Or I can preset two, and since this is a beautiful sunset shot, I can do it very slowly and manually, like that with the fader arm. So now let's look at some unconventional type of transitions, like non-additive mix, wipe, and DME wipe. So we've seen what a mix does. Mix is going to dissolve between it. In fact, I'm going to come up here with a couple of stills. Uh, this one's my daughter, and I'm going to dissolve to my son. You see that a mix equally transitions between the two. A not additive mix is going to get rid of the dark areas of the picture first, and this is halfway through, and then get rid of the light areas at the end. Now let's go back over here to a wipe, and we'll get back to some moving video here. A wipe lets you do a transition between two videos, this time with a pattern. So let's change this pattern if I don't want a left or right wipe, and I'm going to double press the wipe button and it's going to take me into my menu here, and now you can see the patterns that I can use for the wipe. So right now it's showing me that my left to right wipe on this icon here is selected, and now I can go over here and select this diamond wipe and a circle wipe. Now we do have a lot of things that we can change on these wipes. So let me go back to the diamond wipe a little bit, and at the bottom of the menu you're going to see down here edge and direction and modify. So I'm going to change the edge and direction I can come here and turn on a border, and if I go over here and take my mouse a little bit, you can see that I've now added a border to this white. Right now it's black, but we'll change that in a second. I'm going to select matte, and now I can either dial in a luminance value into here with my mouse, or better yet, there's a great little shortcut. If I touch the luminance area here, a little shortcut of colors will come up. So I'm going to select red here, and then close it. So we can see that I've got that. I can also select soft, and again, I can dial with the mouse knob how much softness that I want on this. And I can also, lastly, select soft border. And what this will do is it lets me set the border, and then I can set my inner softness or my outer softness. So if I do this a lot here, what we have is a hard-edged inside and a soft edge outside. Kind of an interesting wipe there. By the way, the borders will stay even if I change a pattern. So now let's go back to the diamond wipe a second, and I'm going to go into the modify menu here. Now in here I can change my position by turning it on, and I can come over here and adjust the horizontal position of the wipe or the vertical. I can also do this with the trackball. So I'm going to get out of device mode, and I'm going to select program preset, and right now I'm turning my positioner on and off. Notice here that as I push the button on the trackball, the same exact button is toggling on the menu. So now I can use the trackball to position my wipe anywhere I want on the screen. If I want to make it smaller, I just use the fader because it's part of a transition. And I move it over here. And it will come full screen if I want to. I can also press the center button on the menu, or I can press the center button on the trackball to center the wipe back up. I can change the angle of the wipe, like this. I can change the speed that the wipe's going to run and actually have it move by itself. And I can change magnitude, which basically allows the wipe to move a little bit as I'm doing the transition. 
And there's a couple other things that we're not going to cover here, like aspect and multi. Uh, I have to leave you with a little bit of fun to try out on your own on the switcher. The next type of wipe is a DME wipe. Now, notice right now that it's not working on this switcher. Remember we covered before that we can take here one and turn it into a DME wipe. So again, I'm going to go into engineering setup, switcher, config, and I'm going to go to program preset and to say that I want a background DME wipe instead of key one. So as soon as I do that, the DME light will come on. This allows me to do a digital effect. Notice how different this digital effect is than a wipe. If this was a plain wipe that I came up and I did a box with, Notice here that what's happening is it's revealing the picture. The picture itself isn't moving. But when I do a DME, the picture itself gets bigger and smaller. That's when you're using the digital effect. Now, just like the wipes, I can double press the DME button, and now the menu pops up with the DME wipe menus. Now, these are going to be kind of limited because we're dealing with a resizer that we borrowed from the keyer. So we're going to be able to limit ourselves to things like a slide, this one's coming from the corner. I can make this back up and do a slide over to the left. I can do one of these things like this. And I can do a couple things like flips and tumbles. Here's a horizontal one. Here's a vertical one. Notice that the ones that aren't available on the switcher, it will not let me select. There's one more transition that I really like personally because it saves me a bunch of keystrokes on the switcher, and that's called preset color mix. Now let's say that your director wanted to go from this motorcycle shot, dip to black, and then come up on a basketball game. I would have to preset black, dip it, quickly change over here, and then come back up. Well, that's all great, but what if you wanted it faster than that? This little button here called preset color mix allows me to do it. The transition, what it's going to do is it's going to preset to a certain color, by default is black. When I move the fader or the auto trans, it's going to go down and up. Let me show you that one more time. When I go preset color mix, it's going to the first stroke of the fader, it's going to go down to black, and then it's going to come up on the source that was preset. In my opinion, it's a big time saver as having to scramble for the buttons when the director wants to dip to black on something.